Onivia, League of Legends highlights. Pivot gear, I think. But they will. It's going to be Pantheon coming through. Now, this again could be going a multiple multitude of places. I don't think... Yeah, this could be, be fake as Pantheon yeah. or it could be carry as Pantheon. Yeah, I think a it's... A bit of vertical jungling, but you can see on fleek moving around. There's the flash forward from Vista. Wants to find the bone skewer and he picks it up. There's the heroic charge and Ona will go down. The red buff is now an afterthought as Carrier moving on over. Faker in here first as Karras is right behind him. On fleek is extraordinarily low and they'll be able to pick up that kill. Faker now just trying to keep the rest of his team alive. And he has level two, so the surround sounds there, and Vista will fall. T1, a fantastic adaptation. Oh, it was a great turn from them. Honestly, he uses the smite to actually get some extra health because they want to push this, but Faker just gets up. In the meantime, Dudu gets a solo kill on Dezaeus. All right. Okay. Okay. That's, That's the thing that could happen. The information wasn't given early enough, and so we couldn't actually remake the game. Yeah, he just didn't tell the refs early enough, so they couldn't identify it. Yep. Um, as, okay, Zayas going to be diving forward here. On Fleek is in there, but Owner is going to join him. Good heroic charge just to be defensive here as Owner, Dudu, sorry, taking a lot of damage and the boulder toss is going to come through. Carrier gets the dive down and it's a double kill for Zayas. He gets his revenge. And so much then... power on the top side and as long as Gumiusa and Carrier know uh, where On Fleek is likely to be, they can just react accordingly and won't give Vista any engage opportunities where there is a pick possible, even with the flash advantage for a few more seconds. Down from Gumi Yushi. Beat Drop comes forward as well. They are buying their time as Carrier has to flash to get out of the Emperor's Divide. Vista finds the stun though as Carrier finds himself in a world of hurt. Tries to ult his way out. He'll get refunded a bit of that cooldown, but uh, yeah, that was a bit of a. This one down. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. So yeah, this is uh, now Zayas in a bit of trouble trying to dodge the Bone Skewer, but he's not going to be able to do it. The ulti's going to miss, and Dudu almost dies, but still. Uh, it doesn't miss, it actually just doesn't do quite enough damage. Of course, the Mortal Shield will impossible to really pick here. Yeah, Ona moving on over. There's the teleport from Zayas. Can they burst down this Rift Herald is the question as the engage is there onto Ona. He moves towards the Rift Herald, but he's not going to quite be able to find it on fleek. Flashing forward, some massive gnar from Zayas, though it's Johnny. He's got red and white guns. He's so massive. Double kill to come through now, you'd assume, as Johnny's going to tidy it up. That was a really nice turn from Hunter Life Esports, and Dudu with the big ultimate, he steals with the win. And Johnny's just going to move back underneath this turret. Vista is in the mist as that is a pretty decent Moonlight Vigil. Gets a phenomenal stun as the Encore is going to come through as well. But Dudu's still just so big. Carrier on the front line will be able to take down the Aphelios. Zayas just trying to play defense, but he's thrown back into the team. It's a big wallop, but it ain't going to be enough. Death from below comes through from Vista. And Hanwa will now push and take down this turret. That's two kills for one here. So much extra damage. Looking for more. Yeah. They're looking for Faker here who flashes out of the way of the Bone Skewer. And Hamwa will back away. That's a turret though going into their pockets. And T1 thinking about backing away. They don't want to give away another one of these, but the Moonlight Vigil is going to go wide. It might spell go time for T1 as they do poop away one of the members. Owner is out of there as Carrier immediately ults forward, but will be taken down. And that is the encore we wanted to see. The Empress Divide will rip through T1. And Hanwa have decisively taken this team fight. It's a double kill for the Silas. Owner, it's just a matter of time before he goes down as well. And that will be the ace and for Hanwa Life. Very Likely that's going to a game three here, Atlas T1. Now so significantly for her behind in gold. The Baron is going to go over to Hanwha Life Esports. All that standing gold and turrets here on the map is going to go to them. And it just goes to show, like, you have one engage Look opportunity. Guarantees the team fight win. Is T1 are going to come over here and try to contest. Yeah, Faker teleported in. Owner is now respawned. Zayas. Encore's just coming up. Yeah, Arrow is going to connect as well. And somehow, it's Carrier that picks up the Baron. What the hell was that? The long-range Encore as well to also punish the Poppy. Oh, you should not be able to Behind get away. It is just fantastic. Stopwatch earlier, they're trying to yeah. buy time. Hanwha are I like this from T1 that allows them to leapfrog forward. Zayas' stopwatch was very interesting. Maybe expecting an engagement that didn't come through as Karis is going to get stunned up. Moonlight Vigil will connect as Dudu is going to get engaged on. If he dies, this fight could just be over, but he's surviving. He's able to get the chains down as well as he flashes out Heartbreaker to get him back in the fight one more time. Kingslayer as well, but Zayas is going to be able to shut him down. Still, the fight is getting won by Hanwha Life, and Johnny's untouched if Dudu's holding all that aggro. That's going to be the sole point 
now into Seoul here for Honda Life Esports. They had Seoul Point before this, and 4,000 damage goes over the Aphelios, but I'm just watching the Silas. Once again, shape a team fight as Faker will find Karas here. Yeah, well, Karas will find Faker as uh, the Empress Divide will push him towards the inner turret, and Faker is, uh, yeah, he's real dead, guys. Um, yeah, bad news. Yeah. Um, they're just going to delay his back just a little bit there as he does move towards the turret, and yeah, it will be Karas that picks up the kill in the end. So Ocean Soul now into this comp. Watch like that to try to buy a few more seconds for T1 to then come closer, because if everyone collapses on top of him while he's in watch, then obviously he can gnar out of it, but... Yeah, he's yeah. got his GA completed now. He also whiffed the ultimate as yeah. well. It was sweeping a... forward. And the Baron has already been started. Zayas will get towards this pit, but it is going down so fast. It is just dead. They are going to be out of secure it now. Carrier is extraordinarily low, and the Encore will come out. The returning Encore not going to connect there as Vista looks for the Bone Skewer. Like, Musi is going to prep this mid wave so they can focus more on the hard push top. Seraphine is going to be so valuable in these moments, but she went for a Ludens build. Not going to be as amazing as it could have been with a lot of other builds, but Sundisk is up. Flank opportunities here, very small for T1. Yeah, Zayas looking for Doodoo -doo here. See whether that 1v1 is going to be possible as Carrier with the Grand Skyfall picks the wrong exit. And Doodoo -doo is going to be able to slink away. This tower is just so extraordinarily dead. And now that Johnny does mid. so much damage. And with that ult from Carrier, you know, like there's there's no angle here for T1. Now they're just going to lose both. Zayas has the Narvar almost ready here. He's looking for Tony. Yeah, can they find the Aphelios is the question, but Zayas not quite able to get him. And he uses his cleanse, but is able to hold on to the flash here in this moment as well, so they can continue pushing forward. The inner turret is getting beaten down by minions as well. In the meantime, as Hanwha take their second inhibitor. And this is just like the classic Hanwha Life Esports Game, game two. 2 experience, everyone. The Game 2 Hanwha Life is the scariest. And with the lead they had, they just didn't make any mistakes. They played around due to they played around topside so well. In each and every team fight, T1 were fishing with their ultimates. And when you have to play around Narbar, yeah. you have to play around your Seraphine ult with no vision, you just have so such a struggle. Well, Dumuji gonna have his ult stolen as the arrow is just gonna fly towards the enemy Nexus. Yes, that's exactly where you wanna go. As I think he was using that as an arrow for the rest of his teammates. As in goes Karas, but flashes out immediately. He's like, no. Nope. I don't want this one. He's going to go golden. Moonlight Vigil will connect. A lot of damage there as now you can see Zayas looking for it, but he's not going to find it. And now Ona's turned into an Azir. It's a big ult from Onfleek for the disengage, but T1. Like bots, they're like, what if we just don't do it? What if we just destroy your Nexus instead? They're going to have to be decisive here, Hanwha. There's no canceling this one. You have to go all in on this, push this inhibitor down, and look for the ensuing fight. Well, Vista is going to get spotted. Stun not going to connect. The inhibitor will go down. And Red now, and yeah. Look at this. Red and White Guns just tearing this turret apart. His carrier desperately trying to make this work. Faker gets a massive encore, but they're just focusing the Nexus. They just want to take it down, and they will. Hanwha Life take game two. Hanwha Life. Crashing back into this series with a vengeance.